I'm Austin from Rischek and today we are on the Isle of Man and we are visiting one of the greatest living watchmakers of our time, Roger Smith, OBE. I'm super excited, so let's go. Roger. Hey Austin. Great to see you. Welcome to the Isle of Man. Thank you, thank you. It's so amazing to be here. It's such a beautiful day. Thanks. Really excited to see what you have in store for us. Yeah, well, thank you for coming. I'm looking forward to showing you around the workshop and telling you a bit about what we do. Yeah, really excited. I mean, as one of the greatest living watchmakers of our time, I'm sure our audience is also extremely excited to see, you know, what you have cooking in there. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, let's get to so it then. Let's go. Come on, please. So George is quite remarkable and he, he sort of dispensed with the 17th, 18th century approach to watchmaking. Yeah. And he you know, readily adopted sort of modern equipment of the time to create his watches. This is a part of the collection um, with his bench here, mm -hmm. where he basically transformed modern mechanical watchmaking, yeah. timekeeping. Started off making pocket watches. And with each watch that he made, I think he made 24 pocket watches. Each one had a slight improvement in terms of technicality. Mm -hmm. Uh, which eventually led to the invention of the coaxial escapement. And so how old were you when, when you and George first? Well, I first met him when I was, I think I was 17 at a college in Manchester. Mm -hmm. um, but then when I came to the Isle of Man, that I was 28 years old. Mm -hmm. And I'd already made a pocket watch by then, which he'd rejected. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I then made a second pocket watch, which then led to me moving to the Isle of Man to work with him. So these are all the tools that like he used? Yes. This is a fraction of, of the whole uh, George Daniels workshop collection. Yeah. We have a lot of it sort of scattered throughout the workshop. But George always used to say that all he needed was a germ of an idea. Yeah. Then he'd come in here and build a complete watch. And I always used to describe it as a basically a watchmaking industry under one roof. He'd make everything from the wheels, the plates, the escapements, cases, dial hands. The only components he didn't really make were the bounce springs and main springs, mm -hmm. some of the dueling and so on. So it's quite remarkable. Yeah, and that's even rarer today than ever, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. a lot of people think watchmaking from a lot of the big brands is watchmaking, but a lot of it is engineering. Yes. Whereas with this, it's actual, real watchmaking. Yes. You know, if you look at these drawings here on the wall, so this is the original drawing for the Marie Antoinette. Yeah. Which, um, You'll see, I think it's this book. Oh, wow. In the cover of his book, Watches. Yeah. Um, he even used Tipex to correct his mistakes. <laughs> oh, yeah. <it's>... Yes. <laughs> and then he did these various drawings here. Now, this is an interesting one because this is the perpetual calendar mechanism for his four-year perpetual calendar. And there are no drawings for the making of that. Mm -hmm. But I think, again, what he did, he, he, he designed the dial. He knew the key points where the um, day and the date should come through the dial. Mm -hmm. And then he designed this mechanism around it. And I asked him when he did this, and he said, well, it's after the event to record what I'd done. <laughs> so funny. So in here, this is where the watchmakers will bring their raw components and start all the finishing processes. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what's unusual about what we're doing here. Each watchmaker is given a, a kit of components for a complete watch, yeah. and then it's their responsibility to take those raw components that have been made through there, and then to do all the heat treatment, the hardening, the tempering we do on the furnace over there in the corner. Oh, wow. Now, that's a big torch. Yeah. <laughs> we don't always use that. <laughs> and everything's done by sort of feel, yeah. eye, yeah. Uh, to get the right sort of heat treatment. Wow. And it takes a long time for the watchmakers to learn that. Yeah. So this is one of the first things they learn, actually. Oh, wow. That's so cool. 
Is this where you also do the like the the blue screws and everything like that, or is that? So actually, the blue screws are done at the bench. Oh, so you have oh, a smaller wow. torch. Yeah. Because with that, you really need to get in very close. Yeah. To see the color. Yeah. And so every single watchmaker has their own little heating pan and flame. And then all the decoration of the components is done on various bits of equipment here. So case finishing, we do dial work here, engine turning. These are George's original engine turning oh, wow. piece of equipment. Again, he found these rusting away in a basement in Clerkenwell mm -hmm. in London, yeah. which is an old watchmaking area. He had them restored and then he taught himself how to engine turn dials. Oh, wow. And then obviously watchmakers lays for the finishing and assembly of smaller components, yeah. the decoration. And every single component has to be touched. Yeah. And every single component has to be taken from that raw state through to completion. And that's what takes the time. Yeah. You know, there's no automation in terms of finishing, decoration or assembly or anything like that. Yeah. It's all down to the skill of the watchmaker. And every component is all finished to the absolute yeah. highest level, even if it's invisible to the yeah. naked eye. Yeah, if it's under a bridge or under the dial, it's the same exacting finish. So one of our open dial watches is finished to exactly the same standard as a dialed watch, which hides many of the components. And I always have this sort of thing when, when I'm talking to a watchmaker and they say, well, you know, is this good enough? It's never a matter of saying it's okay. You know, it's either right or it's wrong. Yeah. A lot of these machines are also like kind of hand operated, right? Yes, yes they are. So in here, Austin, this is where all the watches are built. Mm -hmm. Amazing. So each watchmaker is given his own kit of components mm -hmm. and then responsible for taking that through to completion. Josh is working. Hello, Josh. Hello. Oh, <laughs> and Josh is working on a series one. So basically what happens with each watch, so they get the raw kit, then the watchmaker does all the heat treatment, some basic finishing, and then he builds the watch up to this point He's fitting, the, the escapement's been fitted now. And then uh, the watchmaker brings the watch to roughly to time, mm -hmm. makes sure everything's functioning correctly. And then the whole watch is completely stripped down. Yeah. And then all the finishing process is really done. So yeah. the gold plating of the mechanism, the black polishing, mm -hmm. any graining and so on. So it's, it's almost two stages, isn't it really? It is, yeah. Uh, so this is series two. Uh, can you show Austin what you're up to. Yeah, so this is uh, ticking. Oh, wow. I love looking at the coaxial yeah. escape. Yeah. There's a lot of work in there. Huge. This, the style is crazy. A number of clients now have asked for engraving on the, yeah. on the dial side of their Series 5s. It, it transforms it into sort of almost like a showpiece, really. Yeah, yeah. I really want one. <laughs> <laughs> and then... Um, this is the Series 4. I love the moon. Mm. The moon's really cool. So those are um, gold stars that we punch into them. Thank you so much for showing, showing me your workshop. It was incredibly mind-blowing. <laughs> like, I'm still thinking about all of the amazing watches that your watchmakers are working on right now, and it's insane how so much work goes into making 18 watches or so a year. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it is very unusual, but it's this sort of continuation of the work that George Daniels was doing, mm -hmm. really. Yeah. He had this unusual approach where everything should be done in-house. Yeah. And that was, that developed out of the fact that the British watchmaking industry disappeared. Yeah. And um, it suits, it suits us very well here in the Isle of Man. Mm -hmm. you know, that, there is no industry here. Yeah. Um, so we can't go to a case maker down the road. Yeah. So it's just very natural to carry on that approach, really. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's amazing. And I mean, your mentor, George Daniels, he, he did mention that, you know, you need to somehow make a difference orologically. Otherwise, what's the point, right? We developed the single wheel coaxial escapement and um, that's really improved the accuracy of the escapement, mm -hmm. its reliability and so on. So. We're trying to do our own thing, but yeah, I mean, George was right. You know, he always um, questioned watchmakers' motives when 
you know, he always felt you should contribute to the story, the history, yeah, yeah. the art of watchmaking. And so that's been, uh, it's been ingrained. It's just a continual development. And so my traveling date aperture, mm -hmm. um, first time it's ever been done. Yeah. It's now been copied by other manufacturers. So for me, that's suggests that it is a good idea and uh, complements my work. So yeah, I'm very happy with that. Well, thank you so much, Roger, for your hospitality and time today. It was absolutely incredible to see everything that you're doing. And uh, it's amazing to learn about the future, the past, the present of the brand. And uh, I'm sure our audience will, you know, will love watching this. Thanks very much, Austin. I, I appreciate you taking the time to come over and visit us and to, you know, show us to a whole new audience. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Wow, what an incredible day. One of the highlights of the day was actually visiting his workshop, seeing George Daniel's actual workbench, his drawings, because for people who don't know, the book that George Daniels wrote, it is kind of like the Bible of watchmaking, and it showed watchmakers that it is possible to build a watch completely by hand, by yourself. Whereas in the past, that was almost unthinkable. It was an absolutely incredible day. Walked around in his fields, you know, met his horses, and uh, also spoke to some sheep. Ah. <laughs> Absolutely love being at the Isle of Man. It's a beautiful island, great people, and uh, I can't wait to be back. I have to visit. This time I was only here for less than a day, but next time I'll be here for longer.